We're proud to present GFD Studio. This program by TGE lets you view, modify, and create models in the GMD format. That includes models from Persona 5 and all three dancing games. The Persona 5 Adachi mod, as well as several others on this channel, have been made possible by this tool. When you open a .gmd model using the program, you may see a preview on the left side as long as your graphics card is supported. You can use the middle mouse button to drag, the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, and you can hold alt while dragging to rotate. Holding shift will speed up any of these controls. On the right side, if you click the plus button next to the model, it will show you a list of all the things in the file that you can work with. For instance, here are the textures. When you click on the name of a texture, it will render it on the left. You can right-click a texture to export it either as DDS or PNG. You can also replace the texture with your own DDS or PNG file. Imported PNG files are automatically converted to DDS format. Below the textures, you can expand a list of all the model's materials too. Materials control how parts of the model are rendered in-game. Each material has several unique properties, all of which can be edited. For instance, some of them might glow or have a different level of specularity or opacity. Materials usually reference textures for different types of maps. Diffuse is the most common texture map, it's just a regular texture. There's also usually a shadow map, which affects the intensity of shading on parts of the model. You can change which textures a material references by changing the file name in the material's texture map. If you rename a texture, be sure to also properly update its file name in all texture maps that use it. If the game can't find a texture that a material references, it will crash trying to load the model. So if you're experiencing odd crashes, make sure that all of your texture file names are correct. Fortunately, you'll be able to tell in the editor if a diffuse texture isn't found, because it'll turn black in the preview on the left. Whenever you replace or change something, clicking on the file name at the top of the tree view will refresh the model viewer. You can export materials from other models to use them in your current project. When you do this, just make sure to update the texture maps afterward to reference names of textures that actually exist in the file. Also make sure you change the name of the material back to what it was before you replaced it, otherwise it will appear black in the preview as if the texture was missing. This is very important, if you don't do this, the game will crash. You can also go to the scene dropdown and update the material name in all geometry that uses it, just like we can with texture maps, but it's easier and safer to just stick to the original names. Models that contain animations will have an animations tree view. When you expand this, you'll see them all in numbered order. Just like anything else in the editor, you can export, replace, or reorder them. You can even replace an animation with a custom one exported as an FBX. Similarly, if you go to File, then New Model, you'll be able to import your own FBX file and create a GMD model from scratch. When this box pops up, you'll need to specify the version ID of the model. When you first open a GMD and click on the model's file name, in the bottom right the version ID is listed. The version is different for each game that uses the GMD format. The game will crash if your new model's ID doesn't match the game's version. Once you enter the version for the game you'll be putting this model in, you also have the choice of a material preset. By default, every single material in your new GMD will use the same attributes as the preset you choose. That is, of course, until you replace them or edit them afterward. Hover over each of these options for more details. Personally, I never use the Z Up option, and I only use the Vertex Color option for models from the dancing games, since it's necessary in order to avoid seizures. Anyway, at this point, click OK. This will convert it to a GMD. You can save it and use it in the game. However, you'll want to skin the model to the skeleton of whatever model you're replacing. That way, your new model will be able to use the game's existing animations. For that, 
I recommend using 3DS Max and the GMD Max script. You can get 3DS Max for free by searching for the student version on the Autodesk website. If you're new to rigging, don't get discouraged. It can take a bit of practice to get the hang of the user interface. There are plenty of other videos out there on how to rig custom models. Here's one I really recommend watching, which I'll link in the description. I'll still try to go over all of my personal tips and tricks that I've learned. Once 3ds Max is installed and open, we need to run a Max script in order to import a GMD model. This is the model we will be using as a base for our custom one. You can also use GFD Studio to export the model as .dae, but I prefer using the Max script. Once you've downloaded the latest version of the Max script from the GitHub page, let's go to Scripting, Run Script, and then paste it into your scripts directory. Make sure you also paste the Include folder along with the script. Then, double-click it. This window should come up. Select a file and navigate to your model folder. In this example, I'll be porting Igis from Dancing Moon Knight to Persona 5 using Haru's Bones. Let's start by loading Haru's model. There's a full list of models and their file names on our wiki. In this case, I want to replace Haru's default battle costume, her Phantom Thief outfit. If your model happens to be lying down on the grid, you can drag the view cube so that the top is facing the front. Then click on the top to center it. Right click the view cube and choose Set Current View as Front. This way, you can properly orbit the model with the camera. Before you import your base model, it's a nice idea to make a new layer for it. On the left pane, switch the view from Hierarchy to Layer, and click the plus icon. I'm going to name it Haru. Now, make sure the icon next to it is colored. If it isn't, click on it. Then, load your model and everything should go in the Haru layer. If you already loaded your model and it's on the default layer, you can press Ctrl A to select everything, then right click and choose Add to New Layer. Repeat these steps with Igis's model, but on a new layer called Igis. Make sure the old Haru layer is not selected when you try to load the new Igis model. We now have both characters on two separate layers. You can click on the eyeball icon to toggle the layer on and off so that you can focus on only one at a time. With models from the dancing games, you may notice that they appear discolored at first. This is actually because they have a second copy of each mesh that's used for their outline. Feel free to delete these. Some Persona 5 models have them too. At this point, we only really need Haru's bones and Igis's meshes but I'm going to keep the meshes as a visual guideline for lining them up. The better they match in terms of positioning, size, and shape, the better it will look. But before we can get started with that, let's talk about terminology. Basically, in 3ds Max, each object can have several modifiers. Meshes usually have an editable mesh modifier for editing vertices and polygons. Rigged models use a skin modifier to keep track of weight data for each vertice. A weight is basically a percentage of how much influence a bone has on that vertice. If you're new to rigging and this seems like a lot of information, don't sweat it. We'll be going over using each of these concepts one by one. In this case, both models are in a T-pose but some characters might be in an A pose with their arms slightly lower. You can click on the shoulder bones, right click, and select rotate in order to line them up. It helps to have the magnet icon at the top enabled in order to keep rotation locked to fixed degree angles. Once you've done that, you can select all of the new model's meshes, right click, and choose convert to editable mesh. This will collapse the skin modifiers for each of these models, saving the changes that you made to the arm rotation as part of the mesh. 
It's a good idea to do this anyway with your new model, even if you didn't have to mess with any bones. In our next step, we don't want any skin modifiers on our new replacement model yet. We only want to work with the editable mesh modifiers while we're lining up the models. Now, let's go ahead and delete Igus's bones since we don't need them anymore. Hide all of the meshes using the icons on the left pane, select all the bones on her layer, and then press the delete key, or right click, and click delete. Now we just have to line her up to match with Haru the best that we can. With both layers visible, let's select all of Igus's meshes and move them to intersect perfectly with Haru. They may be different heights, so we'll have to do a bit of stretching. With the Edit Mesh modifier highlighted, we can select vertices or polygons and move them around. I recommend using Soft Selection to stretch limbs or complex shapes. Before doing this, you might also want to select all vertices and use Weld to merge overlapping ones so that the seams don't come apart. This will make rigging a lot easier in the next step. Once you have everything lined up as well as you can, go to Utilities and choose Reset X-Form while all of your new model's meshes are selected. Then, right-click the highlighted models and choose Convert to Editable Mesh like before to collapse all of the X-Form modifiers that get added to each mesh. The reason that we do this after moving and adjusting the mesh is to make their current rotations and translations the default position for the model. Sometimes these get reset by different modifiers and it can be a hassle, so this prevents that. Now we can move on to rigging. You have two options, the easy way and the hard way. I recommend the hard way because it yields much better results, although it is more complicated. The easy way involves adding a skin wrap modifier to Igus's meshes, then adding Haru's meshes to it and converting it to a skin. This will try to generate skin modifiers with weights based off of the original model, but it isn't completely accurate. You can clean up the errors using the manual method afterward, which is why it's best to understand how to use that first. To manually skin a mesh, add a skin modifier to it. Then, add all of the original model's bones to the skin modifier. Next, click on Edit Envelopes and check the box that says Select Vertices. It's also a good idea to scroll down to where it says Advanced Parameters and set the Bone Effect Limit to 4. This is the maximum number of bones that can influence a vertice without causing glitches in-game, so this setting will prevent you from going over that limit by accident. Under Display, you should check the Show No Envelopes box to keep the envelopes from getting in the way while selecting vertices. While the Skin modifier is selected, we can choose a bone from the list. This will be the bone that we start assigning vertex weights to. I like to begin with the pelvis bone and work my way outward. I'll press Ctrl A to select all of the vertices, then scroll down to the weight tool. It's a little icon that looks like a wrench in the skin modifier. For easier access, I like to go to Customize User Interface and look for the weight tool in the list. Mapping it to a keyboard shortcut like Ctrl W makes it a lot more painless to manually weight vertices, so you don't have to go hunting for the wrench icon every single time. The window that pops up has a lot of options, but the only ones that are really important are the numbers at the top. Think of them as percentages, with 1 being 100% and 0 being 0%. If you press 1 while all of the vertices are selected, the entire model will be 100% influenced by the pelvis bone. That means if you now select the pelvis bone and move it around, the entire model should move around with it. Next, we can choose the spine bone from the list in the skin modifier. Select the area around the waist and choose 1. Since the spine bones are parented to the pelvis in the hierarchy, these vertices also move with the pelvis bone. However, they will also bend when you move the spine bone now. 
To make the bend more smooth, you can click on the Grow button in the Weight tool to select the nearest vertices around your current selection. Clicking the Blend button will average the values between both selections. You should see the red color on the model fade to orange, and then yellow in blended areas. These areas are sharing weights between two bones, which makes their influence about 50% each and makes the bend less dramatic and more natural looking. The closer to the bone the vertices are, the more weight they should have. Knowing where to blend weights is the key to rigging. You can also manually select specific vertices and use the plus or minus buttons to the right of set weight to add or remove weight for the selected bone by the specified increment. Doing so is helpful for manually adjusting problematic spots that blending doesn't fix. Continue to do this with the rest of the spine bones, then the neck, head, upper arms, forearms, hands, fingers, legs, feet, and then you're more or less done. If you're ever unsure what to do, don't be afraid to use the original model for reference. I like to have a second 3DS Max window open to compare values using the weight tools. Especially when rigging faces, there's a lot of bones involved and very little room for error. You can test your rig by loading a gap file using the Max script instead of a model. You can select an animation from the list and it will apply it to the scene for you to view. Using the controls at the bottom of the window, you can play or pause the animation, or navigate to a specific keyframe. When you're done, be sure to move the slider back to zero and choose Reset to bring your model back to its default pose. It's important that you do this before exporting. Sometimes these models don't import into 3ds Max perfectly, so even if you're only editing a model and not completely replacing it, you may need to play an animation in order to manually fix some unrigged areas. Once everything looks good, all that's left to do is export your model for use with GFD Studio. When you go to File, Export in 3ds Max, save the model as anything you want. Under Geometry, make sure Triangulate is checked. Under Animation, make sure Animation is checked and that Deformations and Skin are also checked. You can also check the Embed Media box. Under Advanced Options, Make sure Units Scale Factor is set to 1.0. Finally, under FBX File Format, FBX 2011 as the version. If the character is lying down in GFD Studio upon import, or is glitchy and stretchy in battle, but otherwise fine in game, try opening the original model in GFD Studio and right click it. Choose Replace and select your new FBX or GMD file. This will match the bone IDs up properly to prevent discrepancies that could cause such glitches. You can also use this method to port over one model without any additional rigging. Of course, this works best when the models are very similar. If your new character is of a different height or shape and you attempt this, animations will stretch it around to the original model's proportions. To avoid this, use the Make Relative tool in GFD Studio to compare the original model to your new one. Then, select each gap file that you'd like to fix. Similar to the Replace feature before, this updates the animations to account for the new model's proportions. I know it's a lot to take in, but hopefully with time, you'll be able to customize the game to your liking. For more information on running mods, check out our Mod Compendium video. Thanks for watching, and as always, fuck you, boy.